Alrighty then, today we are going to be doing some web scraping with Java using the JSOUP library. It's going to be very simple, it's going to be very fun. We're going to be scraping some data from this website here, this is the Telegraph, they have some stock data, so we're going to take some stock data. This is the FTSE 250 here, there's between like 250 to like 249 stocks here, I don't know how many at the moment. Uh, we're going to get the ticker, we're going to get the name, and we're going to get a cheeky little price as well. Uh, reason for that is we're, also, we're not going to get all of them because it'll take too long um, to just show you what is essentially the same thing multiple times. Uh, but there is a little interesting thing with getting the uh, prices that I want to run by you. Before you get started, in order to make your life easy and to make this work, the first thing you're going to need to download is the JSUP library. The link is in the description. Download it. Put it in your project lib folder, and then we'll add it to the class path momentarily. Uh, and you're also going to want to install something to make your life very easy when doing this. It's called uBlock. It's an ad blocker. I don't know if it works with other ad blockers, but probably it does. So it has this little feature called block element, right? What you do is you can say, I want to block this element. And it will say, okay, what element is it? Is it this element you specifically want to block? And then you can say, yes, I want to do this. But it's really useful because we can take the HTML. This is this little bit of text here is the element we've highlighted. Oh my God, this is going to make us it really easy for us to do. We have to go through all the HTML and take ages. Oh, this is going to make it really easy. Use this. Use uBlock. Okay, here's what I made earlier as well. This is going to be in a table view. We're not going to do ours in a table view because that's too long. So this scrapes this data from various websites, actually, uh, including this one, mainly this one that we're looking at. It's got the price, it's got dates, it's got you know, percentages and all sorts of wonderful jibber jabber. So, uh, yeah, enough gabbing. Let's start getting some coding done. So go to your development area of choice, which is... Net beans for me because I haven't tried the other ones out. Uh, create a package, go to your package properties, assuming you followed the instructions I gave momentarily ago. Moments ago, uh, go to your libraries, click add jar folder, and you should go to your lib folder in your project, select the jar file, JSOOP, whatever version you've got because you've probably got the newer version because you're in the future. I'm stuck in the past. Select it. Add it to the thing, make sure it says build projects on class path, and make sure that's there. Click OK. Wow, we're already coded. We're ready. In your main section, we are going to want to start by just, you know, let's add a little URL. Let's add a little string. We'll call it URL. And uh, what's going in here? It's only going to be the URL of the website we're taking data from. Okay, first part done. That was easy. Next thing you want to do, boring bit, try catch blocks. Oh, I'm so bored. Exceptions, we've got to catch them. Like Pokemon. Right, exception. X, my typing is terrible. Print stack trace, if you can type it correctly. This is not really, catch this is not really doing anything with the exception. It's just saying, here's the problem, sort it. It's not sorting it for me. This is terrible code here. Try, in the try catch block, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to start off by creating a document. So JSOP has this thing, it's called a document. So final document, give it a little name. I'm going to be well original, I'm going to call it document. Uh, and then we want to say JSOP dot connect, not connection, connect. Put in our URL string. Now you could either put it in the string direct there or you can use the little title we've used here just to make it easier and cleaner. Uh, and you'll see there's some red lines. Damn! It's like Microsoft Word all over again. Command O I, Command Shift I, should I say. Uh, fix all the imports. This one where we have multiple to select from, select the document one from jsoup.nodes. You could also import these manually if you're a Neanderthal. Okay, this is uh, 
This is also giving me another error, and I do this every time because I've got forgot to call get. I haven't told it what to do yet. So it's connecting, and it's going to get that document. Right. Well, the first thing we should do if we're going to see if this works is we're going to test it. So we're going to have a little system out print line, and we're going to say document or whatever you've called yours if you're more original than me, um, and we're going to say outer HTML, right? And if this works, right, hopefully, it should print the outer HTML or the HTML of this page. So in specs, it's going to basically print everything we see here that, yeah, it should print everything that's to do with this, this website. Um, let's have a look, see if it works. Ooh, we're waiting with bated breath for this thing to run now. So it's going to start running now, and we're going to see what's going to happen. And it's working, there we go, look at that. Right, you can see it's running through it all right now. Um, right now, if you look closely, you can see that there are the stock codes, there's the stock name, and there's the stock price. We're going to use this. This is what's going to happen. We're going to take this data from here specifically, um, but we're going to have to you know, separate it out from the rest of the HTML. So let's start separating all this data. Uh, what do we need to do? Well, there's something you should be aware of. This is something that I've always found to be a bit of a problem when I'm doing any web scraping with tables. For some reason, and I don't know why, when we start scraping, there's usually a gap like there's an element that's not filled in a table for some reason on some H on sites. So we're going to have to account for that. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to start with a lovely for each loop. So for, for the element row, and I'll explain this in a second, we're going to get our document. So we're going to call that document, which, you know, name, whatever you've called it, if you're more, you know, creative than me and haven't and called it something better than, you know, type that then we're going to select something and we're going to select the element that we're going to start getting all this data from so what's that what what element is that well it's going to be the table right you can see here we have the table data so we have rows and we're going to try and get the rows and we're going to have to get it out of the table so the first thing we're going to do is find this table this is where ublocks a little bit more challenging because finding the table can be a bit of a problem because it'll get the id sometimes so uh, let's go view source, not view source, what am I on with? We're already here, uh, inspect element, have a look here. Okay, so we have the table row, we have the table head. Table class, this is the one. Okay, something to note here. So we're gonna copy this, so we're gonna go table class and copy the class. Table sorter space full. Something to note, we want to call the type of element, so it's a table, right? table dot if it was a div you would do uh, div dot table or whatever it's called right we're going to do table then there's a problem here and I always find that every time I started doing this the first time I learned how to do this uh, I kept putting the gap here because that's how it appears uh, but it's not we need to put a dot there so if we select this if you look up towards the table now not where the code is up to the table it says table summary table dot full so it's, it's dot full so that's what we're going to put there, dot full. And then what is it? We're not just going to get the table here. here. We're going to get the row because we're calling it row. So we're going to do tr space tr, not dot space, not dot tr, just space tr. And we're going to get that. Okay, so then let's finish this for each loop. And you'll notice there's the red squiggly line under element like Microsoft Word. There we go. Fix the import. And let's get ready to get some specific data out of here first thing we're going to get we're going to get the ticker but as i just mentioned there's that gap right so we're going to go row one row two and for some reason we're going to go there's a row hidden here okay and it happens a lot on tables i don't know why but there's a row that's hidden here somewhere where it has no data in it and this is going to cause us problems later when we're doing passing doubles from strings when we're doing the price data. So we need to account for that before we start doing this. Now, the way we're going to do that, is we're going to say if, and just create a little if statement, and then else, 
This bit here, we're going to get any bit of data from here, but we're going to use the ticker because it's easiest. So let's first, uh, we're going to use U block to get this data. Mine's turned off for some reason. I don't know why. Turn it back on. We're going to block the element here. So select that. Make sure you select the wider box and not the actual specific text. Wider box. Come up here and it's going to be this. This is why I recommend using uBlock because you can do this on any website. You know, might, might not be following along on the same website I am or the website might change. So hopefully this will still work in the future. We're going to get this. TD colon nth of type 1. Right? Clever among you will probably realize that this is probably going to be number 2, this is number 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. Uh, so, if this is blank, right, because I told you that this is what's going to happen, the first row isn't this one, it's up here somewhere, okay, so this TD event type 1 accounts for all of these rows here, but there's also a hidden one, so if that, uh, that's not that actually, sorry, I'm totally wrong there, we have to uh, say row select Put in the string again. I've typed the wrong thing. You put it in quotes. Dot text, right? Then equals null, right? Empty. If it's empty, then we're going to do something. What we're going to do? We're just going to continue. We're going to escape from this particular for each loop. Right, as in this row, we're going to go, fuck it, skip it, leave it, allow it, fam. That's what we're going to do. So, where we're putting the data is all going to go in this little else statement. So, because we know the first thing is going to happen, blank. So, it's going to skip to this bit here. Okay. What we're going to do, call, uh, let's create a little string. We'll call it ticker. Any guesses for what we're going to put here? Equals something. Well, we've already done it actually. Just so happens we've done it here. Row dot select and then the type, the element bit we're taking because we've got the row. So we're doing table row. So we're doing the table. We're doing this table specifically, and we're doing the table rows with this this for each loop. And then we're specifically choosing this column, essentially. Okay, or this particular point. So this is now going to be the ticker. Well, let's double check this works. We have to make sure we call dot text at the end because I always forget to do that. But that should work. So if we do out ticker, see if it works. We'll run this code again now. Being slow. There we go. Look at that. All the tickers are all there. Let's check the website. Oh my God, they're all there. All right. So let's look. Bell for Betty. That's there, BBY. Are they there? BBY's there. Wowzers, trousers. It's working. Okay, so we've scraped the data from the website now. Great. So let's get the name. The name is going to be, I'm guessing, event type 2. So let's double check. So we'll do this. So we find a string. Name is equal to row.select. Again, because we're selecting the row. And we're going to get this. Now, I might not be right here, but let's double check. So, pick any, doesn't matter. You can pick any of these. Nth type 2. Brilliant. So, we're right. So, now this has the name as well. Okay, that's that's all good. Now comes the tricky bit. Not really too tricky, to be fair. We're going to get the price. Well, what are we going to do to get the price? Well, we're going to call us, create a string. We'll call it temp price. Okay. This is going to be equal to row select three. Let's, again, just check because this is easy to check now. Yeah. Da -da. Ooh. Oh no, it's ever so slightly different. TD right. It's TD right three. So I imagine this would actually still work, but I'm just going to do what I, uh, you block saying. Okay. We've got the string, but because we don't want the string really, like we don't want this to be a string, 
We want this to be a number, right, that I can manipulate. What if I want to take the price and take the number of shares outstanding, right, and multiply it, them together to get the market cap or divide the market cap by the price to get the shares outstanding. If I want to do any of that, I can't have it be a string. I have to have it be an actual number, like an integer, a double, whatever you want to have. Okay, we're going to use a double because it's easy. We're not really going to have too many problems with that. We know we have two decimal places. We're not ever going to have any more than that. So let's just keep it as a double. Okay, so we've got the string. Right, look in the code. We've got the string. That's right there. That's the string. If I was to print temp price, it would be the string. Okay, it would be the number, but it's not a number. It's a string that looks like a number. So we're going to have to get it from there. But there's something you should be aware of. Well, the decimal place is fine. When we pass a double from a string, that will work. It's like, okay, yeah, that's the decimal place. Great, we know that. But commas, they're a big no-no. Or if it was a, a currency symbol or something else in there, it will cause a problem. Minus signs are fine, it's, it recognizes those as negatives. Uh, but the problem we're gonna have is commas. Now, not all of these have commas, but if they do, we wanna take the commas out and then pass the data. So what we're gonna do, take the string, call it price one because I'm lazy, I can't think of anything better. We're gonna take um, the uh, temp price one we're going to say replace and we're going to replace the commas so put it in quotes what, what character you're trying to get rid of and it might be like might be that you're trying to replace like this or that particular set of characters from it we do that comma and then with what you're replacing it with so in this case we're replacing it with nothing so just quote marks nothing else you don't need to put anything else Okay, so now this temp price one is temp price normal, but without the commas, which means we can now do this double and we'll call it price. What we'll do is we'll say double capital D here. You have to put the capital D, otherwise it doesn't work. Pass double, and then we're going to put in temp price one, and that's now a double, and that that will work. Okay. Uh, so let's see if this all works. So hopefully, if the code is all right and I haven't mistyped things and, and, and it's all going well, and I haven't lost internet connection, this should work. So system out print line, we're going to say name plus space plus, uh, no, we're going to say name here, actually. We're not going to say name there. We're going to say ticker here. Keep it in line with the data with the data on the table, da, da, da. space again, any guesses, price, obviously, okay, let's run the file, let's run it, it's going to work, come on, little drum roll here, oh my god, it's worked, wowzers trousers, you've just successfully scraped website data, wow, and like I say, this is, um, these are doubles, so we can manipulate these, Mathematically, using math and arithmetic, uh, ticker value, name value, and they're all in line, right? So what this for each loop is doing is going through each row, as I said, going through each row. So you don't have to like worry about like trying to link the ticker to the name because they're all in the same for each loop, right? So we could like all add this all to one stock um, object. And then we could add that to an array list. So you'd have all the data that corresponds together in one thing that you could then later access outside of having scraped the data. So hopefully this has been useful. I've been Shane. I still am. If anyone has anything to say, there's the comments. You can ask me questions. I'll try and help you. You know, have a nice day. I don't know. I don't know how to finish this video. I'm going to finish it now. Like right now, goodbye, forever, maybe.